This is another Anvil tutorial. My name is Michael Kipp and I want to show you the basic concepts underlying Anvil so that you can better understand why you need which files. And so the first file you will think of when you use Anvil is a video file because that's what you want to annotate, that's where you want to add information. For instance, if you are a linguist or a gesture researcher and you're interested in you know the relationship between what is spoken and what is gestured then you probably want to encode words you know and you can do this as you know you Anvil visualizes these words as intervals with a begin and end time that you have to add of course manually and you can do the same for gestures so let's add a little gesture here okay and in Anvil you do these these things are on different tracks so these are called tracks um, sometimes people like to call them uh, tier okay or layer and um, so we already have two things here we have a video let's call it v1 and the video typically has the extension dot morph if it's a quicktime video or dot avi if it's a microsoft format and on the other hand we have some file which stores our annotation data. So let's call this just annotation file and a1. And this in Anvil, this has the extension dot Anvil. Okay, so that is where all the data of your that you encoded is stored. And so this file relates to this particular video, right? If you take another video, of course, these information here um, do not apply anymore. So you have a specific annotation file to a specific video. Now, you have two tracks, words and gestures, and Anvil has to know about these things. So you need, to, you need some way to tell Anvil that you want to have two tracks, and one is called words and one is called gestures. And later on, you will have to specify you know, certain relationships between tracks and you know, the, the exact contents of the tracks. So there's lots to tell Anvil about tracks um, and about the coding scheme as it's sometimes called. So this is basically the structure that you want to have to put your coding inside. And in this particular case you would say, okay, I want to have two tracks. One is called words and one is called gestures. Right, and the way to do that in Anvil is you create a new file uh, and that's called the specification file. Specification file, and let's call that S, and this had, has the extension .xml, okay, since it's an XML file, although the Anvil file is actually also an XML file. And so the annotation A, A1 not only has to point to the video v1 but also to the specification file so that Anvil knows where to look up the the basic structure for your for your annotation and you might think well that's kind of awkward you know why not you know why not put this whole blueprint directly into a1 you know just make a little bit you know a little embedding and then put this you know if you, this is our blueprint for the structure, why not put it directly into the file? And the reason why this is not a good idea is that in the course of your further annotation, uh, you will have, you know, a long relationship with um, your specification. So if you annotate a bunch more videos, then you will create a bunch more annotation files. So let's say A2, A3, A4, and they all refer to their individual videos and they contain the actual data that you encode okay so when uh, the specification is the blueprint then this is actually the data okay the data um, however the data is always different but the actual blueprint is not. So in each of these annotations, of course, you have two tracks, and of course, they are called words and gestures, and you wouldn't want these things to be called otherwise. And so in Anvil, they all point to the same specification file S. And 
why is this a good idea? Because you cannot have any inconsistencies. Let's say your boss says he wants to encode head gestures too. Okay, so then you add another track called head and automatically for all the previous annotations you will have a third track called head. You don't have to change anything's, anything in the files A1, A2, A3 and so forth. They automatically have this track. Of course you have to add the data then manually so Anvil cannot do that for you but at least you know you have consistency in the way that the tracks are called and in the number of tracks and you would not have that if you had a separate you know if you had these blueprints embedded then you would have to change every single file um, when you add another track and so okay we don't do that in Anvil okay we have um, a separate specification file Okay, but the effect is, the drawback is, of course, that when you start out with annual and you just want to do a little bit of annotation, then, of course, you still have to have these three files, okay? You usually, first you have a video, and then the second step in Anvil is you have to have a specification, so you have to have a way to specify what, in what structure you want to annotate, and only then can you create your first annotation file okay so that's a little bit like this step is probably something that you you know wouldn't intuitively um, think of that you have to do it and so to make things easy for people who start out with Anvil in every Anvil distribution if you know let's say you install it in a, in a directory called Anvil you will find a subdirectory called spec and this subdirectory contains uh, many examples of coding schemes. Okay, uh, and so you can very quickly start to try um, various coding schemes and then continue to to modify these schemes or to create your own. Okay, I hope this gave you a small overview uh, and, and clarifies um, the relationship between video annotation file and specification. See you in the next video.